Hey guys, welcome to the edge of real and cyberspace and welcome to one of the most spectacular bookshops in Holland. I am in the Dominikanen, the Selexis bookshop, which is actually an old renovated church turned into a bookstore. So they've got a church, which is an old building, which is cool. They have a lot of books, which is also very awesome. And they have a coffee shop. So it's like the ultimate thing to hang out in. The coolest coffee shop slash bookstore that you can find um, for a long way around here. So today we got an uh, interesting interview for you. We are talking to Sigrid Dufremont, which is a, uh, who is a Belgian female video blogger who reviews mobile phones. And we'll have an interesting talk about journalism, about how she ended up to be the only female Belgian, Flemish, English-speaking video blogger on the planet, and um, about mobile phones, of course. So it's going to be a long interview. We're going to get right into it. And uh, as I shoot some footage here and have a nice cappuccino in the coolest coffee shop, um, in Holland. <laughs> uh, enjoy KWTV 0018. See ya! Hey guys and girls, welcome to KWTV 0018. Today we have a scoop for you guys and girls. We are going to have a video interview as I am sitting here right now on the other side of the country, not the planet, not the world, not the universe, but just plain old little Belgium, um, in the same time zone and uh, actually in the same uh, part of the country is Sigrid Dufremont, the one, the only, well, I can call her the Belgian version of Kelly Lewis, can I? <laughs> um, I'll let you do that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, quick introduction, Sigrid Dufremont is... Um, well, a rare species, so much that the World Wildlife Federation Fund should open up a page for her because she is uh, the only female uh, Belgian video blogger who does her thing in English um, on the planet. So, when we found, when I found her on the internet, I went like, oh, I am no longer alone! <laughs> <laughs> it was very nice. What, now you're that. the second girl who does it? Yeah, I'm the second girl who does it. <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today, Sigrid. Welcome to KWTV. It's so thank great to have you. Thank you. I've always wanted to, ever since I saw your uh, podcast, I've been wanting to say KW, say it again. KWTV. KWTV. I love that. Uh, yeah, it's, and I've I've looked it up. KWTV. <laughs> well, if you can, if you can, if you can go like K N I G H T W I S E dot com very fast, then you can join the podcast crew. It's basically okay. I'll practice on it. <laughs> uh, so, um, secret, you are uh, the white, uh, the white raven in uh, in the pack here, uh, being a Belgian female blogger. Um, can you tell us in five words, if people ask you, uh, can you introduce yourself? Who is Sigrid Dufermont? Well, I'm 27. I live in the wonderful city of uh, Ghent, which is just, uh, well, in the middle of Belgium, I guess, in Flanders. I, I love all things mobile. I'm a complete mobile addict. I have a new cell phone about every two months and then I'm being, well, I'm, I'm already, the, then I'm being um, careful with my yeah. money, but I have cell phones all around and I decided to blog about those just to have a reason to have all those cell phones around because my family was like, she's going insane buying all these cell phones. And so I started blogging about them, and I've been doing that ever since. And it, it, it's starting to uh, become more and more of a professional hobby. Because um, we, we, I, I immediately noticed when I when I first heard you talking, your English is um, impeccable. Um, how did you get into all this? What's your background of uh, of ending up in 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 well video? podcasting or video blogging and and blogging as well because you are a writer as well aren't you well yes i'm uh i'm tr i'm a trained journalist i never actually um i graduated and then i said well this world of journalism it's all about about finding a job and it's hard because of the crisis and 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 so i went for more online stuff in my job and less journalistic stuff but i am a journalist uh, in education and a radio journalist, really. So that's a bit of my background. Uh, why I sound so American, I went to the US for a while. That's always been uh, a dream of mine. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was thinking, I want to live in the US for about 
six months or maybe a couple of years, but it's very hard to get in. You have to have very high grades to uh, get allowed into a university. So in the end, I just um, went to school in the Netherlands. And after four years, I thought, well, I still want to go to the U.S. And if I start working, that'll, that, uh, that opportunity will be gone. So one day I just decided I'm going to make my documentary, my radio documentary to graduate. I'm just going to take it to uh, the U.S. I'm going to find something to make a documentary about and then just go to my school and say, look, I know this is not really how we roll because I have to show up for classes, but I'm going to go to the U.S. and I need to graduate, so I'm going to do it there. Wow, amazing. And so, they said, and to my surprise, they instantly said, okay. Wow, so, so, so you created your own opportunity to, to yeah. experience that. I had to do that because otherwise it wouldn't happen. And uh, because there's always projects where they're like, you can apply here and you'll get funding, which is really nothing. And but in the end, I just uh, I have a wonderful dad who always wanted me to follow my dreams. So I said, look, I want to uh, make this documentary in the U.S. And I'm also going to write my graduation uh, thesis there. So bye. Can you please help me? <laughs> and he said, OK, fine. Go follow that dream. And uh, I did. Wow. That's uh, yeah. that's amazing. How was it for for small? Well, um, Sigrid did mention that Ghent is in the middle of uh, Belgium. Well, Ghent thinks it's the center of Belgium, but geographically, that's not always true. Well, it's maybe the middle of Flan. I don't. Know. For me, it's the middle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> just uh, just to point out, a little geography lesson here. Um, yeah. Belgium is that little little country covered by a slab of chocolate. Uh, Sigrid's up in the west. I am at the far east. If I stick my arm out like that, I can really touch the Dutch border. I'm yeah, poking, I'm poking yeah. a Dutch guy here. That's that's yeah. how close. I can I do live. that with France. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. so you, you see, try doing that in the Midwest. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. How was it for for a Belgian girl to to go to the the, the big old states? How was the, what was the cultural what was the cultural difference like for you? Well, what I really liked is that I did not go to New York or Chicago or San Francisco, even though I visit those, uh, most of those cities. I went to a uh, city called Oklahoma City, which is the capital of Oklahoma. But Oklahoma, even though it's the heartland of the USA, it's there's not much to do in Oklahoma. It's basically still a... Uh, 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 a state with a lot of cowboys and Indians, like really. Um, and <laughs> so it was very interesting to end up there instead of uh, one of these cliche um, city cities or states. And that made the cultural shock a lot bigger um, because this is like flat, America. This is just country and you have the city and then you have the city border and then there's nothing. And when you want to go to a village where, I don't know, a friend of a friend lives, sometimes you have to drive three hours. I mean, suddenly a visit is a road trip. And that's what I loved about the U.S. If you do that here, if you would drive the same uh, distance, you would basically be in Paris. And here we were just like, oh, we have to go visit this and this grandma over there. And okay, we'll drive for three hours and we'll stop in the middle at the, at the, I love truck stops. I love the cliche truck stop with all the tough guys and the subway and this depressing country music on the speakers and, and the tumbleweeds going by. I, I love truck stops. I would just go back to the U.S. just to, to do a tour around truck stops. I, uh, I love those. So that's what I really liked, that I really had that shock of where am I and there's nothing here. Then again, there's also the difference in religion. People are still very religious in Oklahoma. Um, the city is, is about as liberal as it gets, and even there, it's like Republicans all over the place. And not just Republicans, but like Christian Republicans. Oh, so there's yeah. churches on every corner, and these lovely Jesus banners, wherever you go, like Jesus loves it. it to me, it felt like a sect now and then. I, I thought, wow, I'm in a cult. I'm in a cult. Um, but after a while, a couple of weeks, that kind of faded away and I got used to it. And then it seemed all very normal to me to get up at two in the morning and say, hey, I want to go to Walmart. And you just got up and went to Walmart. And that, oh, 
my screen just uh, I don't no longer see you, but uh, I loved that. I still miss that when I'm uh, <laughs> I'm 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 someone who lives at night mostly, and then I'm like, oh, I wish I could go to Walmart. I miss that. Oh, and Starbucks, but we have that here too now. We yeah we have two. Yes, but we don't, and that's the ultimate lazy American lifestyle. We do not have Starbucks drive-throughs. I love the Starbucks drive-throughs where you just pull up on uh, in your car and like buzz like at McDonald's and say, "Hey, I want a frappuccino." Blah 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 blah, and a muffin, and you drive on and you get the frappuccino, and you move on to I don't know Borders, and you go to a bookshop and drink something there. Uh, yeah, we we could sabotage a train, make it go <laughs> at maximum speed, and literally plow through the 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 marble walls at the Antwerp train station. Yeah, thus, we could do that. Thus creating that would, our own Starbucks. That would drive kind of be the same. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we could only do it once though. Yeah. 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 They, they'd have to rebuild it. We could do it once every five years once we get out of prison. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that would be a good idea. <laughs> that would be great. I um, uh, just want to want to place all of those remarks because uh, m- many of our, our viewers and listeners are, are from beyond countries beyond Belgium, from the U.S. actually. Here in, in Belgium, uh, religion isn't doing very well lately. We've no. uh, we've got a new uh, bishop who is not really good at PR. So um, no. You might want to check out some Belgian newspapers to follow that along, but that's not going to be our main topic. You blog. Um, you have an unpronounceable blog in yeah. English. Yeah. Sigrid Schrift is, uh, yeah. is 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 uh, virtually Klingon. So <laughs> yes, but the Sigridwrites.com. It's not much better, but at least it's something English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still it's still Sigrid is not a Klingon name. No, 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 no that's no, not good. No, no, neither is Klingon a official Belgian language. <laughs> Although not yet. Not yeah, yet. yeah, we 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 need a common denominator. So Klingon would be, would yeah. be bad. Okay, um, <laughs> you blog, so you're you're a, a journalist by training, and uh, you uh, blog about all kinds of things. Has blogging created? Um, have, do you feel that blogging and the new media have created opportunities for you that you would not have uh, experienced otherwise? For, oh yeah, classic journalism. Definitely. Um, when I got, uh, when I graduated, I almost stepped into the classic situation of going everywhere and saying, hey, I need a job. And I did, but more for online projects. But now that I'm writing more and blogging, vlogging, I noticed that those uh, writing opportunities um, come more to me than, I, than, than me looking for them. So I think one thing I have learned is that you don't you don't graduate sit on your chair and write resumes it's it's much better to just do what you like doing and um, start experimenting with what you can do and then if that somewhere finds a connection with the other with other people they'll contact you and that's great like you found me so um, I, I never thought I would be in a, in a video podcast I unfortunately have a I'm lacking a ton of money to throw your way and hire you right away because I would love to to do just that as well. Um, but it is it is uh, like you say that that sometimes opportunities present themselves. Um, yeah. Speaking personally, I've 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 had the opportunity to be uh, to get uh, press credentials for the facts uh, exactly. convention in Ghent. Stuff like that. Yeah. 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 And and there there comes a point because the angle of, of, of my personal life is not around journalism so it's basically new for me to start waving my hands around and demanding press passes but it does open up a, a window of opportunities yeah and I wouldn't call myself a journalist at this point but I think a lot of journalists would probably hate me even pronouncing journalism and this and that it's, that's just my education and I went ahead and thought hey that old school journalism I don't like the whole world around it of uh, lots of egos and fighting for jobs i mean in the u.s too look i think it's very hard to find a job at a newspaper at this point because newspapers are practically dying so i just went ahead and did what i wanted to do instead of what i would hope to find uh and that's been a good decision i like what i do and i like where my life is going right now and that would have been a lot harder trying to reach that through uh, classic channels like contacting newspapers or TV shows or stuff like that. Is um, do you see the the well, let's call it the professional journalism slowly evolving or, or eroding due to the rise of the new media and the rise and the opportunities presented by by blogging and podcasting and video blogging. 
I think new media puts a lot of pressure on the classical sense of journalism because, you know, you used to work for a newspaper and something happened and you just went there and it's like, oh, wow, and you interviewed people and you asked questions and then you went back to the office and you ch you, you went fact fact checking and, and, and just building the story on solid ground and taking your time and then... Of course, you have the deadline, but still, compared to what you have now, then you had ages to write that story. I mean, you had hours right now. If you do not put that story online within five minutes, your scoop's gone yep. because there's people all over the place that are constantly checking the Internet, but they don't bother checking facts. They're just like, this happened. I think this happened, and this is why I think, but I'll post it online. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's that must be very frustrating for journalists because a lot of people in the audience just want a quick fix, just like what happened, and then they take the rest for granted. It's like, oh, you say that happened? Okay, I'll believe it. So the whole trouble of a journalist trying to check those facts and get the story right, it's just, I mean, people believe whatever they read first often. And that's a shame for classical journalists that they have to hurry and uh, um, compromise on their quality because others do not do not even bother to think about quality. Um, that must be very frustrating. That said, I'm probably more part of the second group that just posts things online. Uh, even though I do try to be very aware of my responsibility, I don't think it's... I don't think just saying I'm a blogger so I can post everything should protect a blogger all the way. Mm -hmm. I don't like that attitude. I think you should be responsible for what you say, what you write, what you publish. And you sh should be aware that when you publish something, this can harm others uh, in ways you can hardly imagine often. Is it, is it with, with the power invested uh, comes great, uh, with great knowledge comes great power, with great power comes great responsibility. Is that something that bloggers still need to learn? I think so. Blogging is so easy these days. You've got WordPress and you've got just a gazillion sites where you can just type in a, 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 an avatar, a nickname, and you start blogging. But people don't realize that other people read this uh, often. Uh, not that well opinions formulated without much thinking, just being like, oh, I'm so mad because this happened and this happened and this happened. And, and people read that and build their stories on it or go to the store and say, hey, but this blogger said. And there's just a million reasons why bloggers should be more careful without silencing. Let someone silence them. I don't think that's the way to go either, to go like, oh, we have to be a lot more careful. But I think bloggers should be taking responsibility for what they write and what they say. After all, it is the public space. If I start yelling on the street saying, all this kind of people is stupid and this store is lame. I mean, it's not going to take long before the cops show up and say, I'm sorry, lady, but what are you doing? And I think if you do it on the Internet, it's going to have consequences as well. Is it, is it that the, is, do you share the opinion that, that bloggers and content creators on one hand should start, you know, creating original content instead of just rehashing everything and not even checking the facts? I think re even rehashing has a value in the way that um, everyone has their point of view. So maybe a story that you will see in this way, I will describe it in another way. And that's interesting. On the other hand, I think not checking the facts or blindly um, assuming they are um, right or within your scope, within your tunnel, um, I think that can be dangerous and can divide groups because you don't bother to look over the wall and think, what does this person think? Like a journalist has the principle of checking. I don't know the English word, but if you if someone accuses someone of something, you go to the other person and say, hey, this person accused getting, you of doing that. Getting the other side of the story. Yes, you get the other side of the story. If you don't, you're not a good journalist. You have to. Bloggers, you're not going to say like this celebrity... Um, did this and this and I think that's lame and she's promoting hate and blah 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 but you don't go to that person and say hey I'm blogging about you so I would like a comment on um, what I'm saying here oh, well, you don't do that 
Well, that would be nice. I was, I was just thinking which celebrity I would, you know, I'd post something about has two different kinds of shoes. And then I would have to go over there and she would have to, you know, tell me her That's what a journalist has to do. Can you imagine how frustrating it would be for, is for, for a journalist to have to go and say, hey, someone said this, what's your response? While a blogger just says, well, what did you say? And this is stupid and blah, 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 and they accuse you of this and I think it's true. You are a bad person because that's what happens a lot of times. Yeah, I, I think there is some immaturity there just like in the technology, basically. Well, I think the immaturity of the, of the, of the content creators is kind of lagging behind the maturity of the technology. Blogging and everything, it all just works and it's really easy, but we don't know really how to wield that tool. Um, you're pretty down with that. Um, you have the, uh, the, the, the blog that you write and you also do video reviews. Now, there is an interesting hook to that. Okay, good looking girl, cell phone, camera, <laughs> it's, it, it has to sell. Um, how did you get into the idea of, of doing uh, video reviews? That's, that's kind of funny. Um, it's very, it's a very recent development. So I've been blogging very actively again, uh, specifically about mobile since the beginning of this year only. And then around in the spring somewhere of this year, I don't like cameras. Like you can ask my family um, for the past 20 years if they would show up with a camera, like even a photo camera, I'd be running away. Be like, I, I don't like that. I don't want to be on the picture. And why are you videotaping this? I, I hate it. I, I really hated it. And then one day this spring, I wanted to suddenly get over it. I was like, okay, I'm going to sit in front of my camera here at the computer. I'm going to make a little video about what cell phone you should buy um, f focused on this and this. Do you like typing? Do you like looking cool? And I made this video in one afternoon and I posted it purely to get rid of that camera fear and camera frustration. And the funny thing is that within a couple of hours after posting that video, I got contacted by a magazine saying, hey, you're selected for a photo shoot. Would you like to come? And I was like, wow, this is going too fast. You know, I'm just... I you were just... indeed featured in, in Belgium's leading woman <laughs> magazine, which, <laughs> yes, I course, yeah. which I, of course, don't read. I actually do read it because <laughs> know, yeah. know your enemy better than you know yourself. Sorry? Know your enemy better than to know yourself. Yes, yes, yes. So you were featured in, in, in Flair, which is yeah. uh, the Belgian magazine. And, yeah. and that's that's where your profile picture actually uh, comes from. So that yeah. kind of took off. But where do you go from, I have an itch to scratch and I want to tell people what cell phone they're selling to actually getting phones for reviews and stuff like that? Just do it. It's, it's like a Nike uh, commercial. But so in the beginning of this year, I just told myself, I'm just going to do this and I can't approach a Samsung or a Apple or any other phone brand saying, hey, I'm going to start a blog about phones. I don't have readers, but I'm going to be great and you need to send me phones. You can't do that. Um, so what I did is I told my family and everyone's like, okay, you're going to think I'm insane, but then I'm going to start buying phones like a madman. I'm just going to buy them, test them blog about them and sell them again. So that's what I did. And it only took about three months before the first brand contacted me and said, look, uh, can we send you this phone? We want you to test this phone. And after that, it just took off and more and more brands started sending me uh, phones. Uh, and other products, like for a while, I was too busy. I had to go back to saying, no, I'm only going to do mobile because all of this kind of stuff came in. And do you want to watch this movie? Do you want to test this uh, stereo? Do you want to do this, this, this? And I was like, okay, this is all great, but it's getting too much. So I went back to focus on mobile. And that's where I am right now. And I can still get phones sent to me, which is great. But I still do buy some phones um, just to have them on the first day instead of waiting for some other more important reviewer to get done with it. So, um, but that's still also my personal interest. I, I have no patience when it comes to mobile phones. If it is out at 12.01, I want to have it at 12.01.30. So I'm not going to say, okay, I'll wait two months before nah. I can get through the phone. I am, I'm not going to do that. I shall not stand in line with the peasants. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are you're the to my for me personally you're the master of quick and dirty which which uh which, well, now that sounds wrong 
<laughs> it does. I'll Wait. allow it because it's your birthday. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th that's that's good for that, that's uh, five points for discretion there. <laughs> what I meant with uh, that <laughs> you're the master. Say happy birthday in the comments. Oh yeah. god. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's my 36th birthday today. And look what a what a great gift that I'm getting. I'm getting one of the best uh, uh one of the most talented and best looking female oh. English Better Belgian bloggers. Also the only female English Belgian blogger, by the way. Uh, on my... Yeah, it's, it's an easy accomplishment this way. <laughs> oh. No, what I was saying is, uh, what I meant with the quick and dirty is that you get it, uh, you get a f mobile phone review in under five minutes, completely without a script, flip open your camera, do the craziest things, and make a, make a very entertaining, uh, very entertaining video without going for, hey, I'm a pretty girl and I also know how to push a button uh, touch. You really know what you're talking about. And you get it in under five minutes. How do you do that? Basically, sometimes it's very tempting to do it differently because when you go to YouTube or, or other websites, or f like phonedoc.com, I love phonedoc.com, but when you watch the reviews, it's like, camera on the phone, hi, I just got this from T-Mobile, and blah, 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 these are the specs, and I love watching it, but I hate making stuff like that. I tried, but it's so slow, and then when I watch myself, or listen to myself mostly, because I'm not in front of the camera that much, uh, I'm just like, this is boring, I can't watch this, this is, this is awful. So what I started doing is I did record the long version in the beginning, but then I just cut and cut and cut, and it ended up being so short. And that kind of became my trademark, uh, the, the short, the quick and dirty. The, the, the bad side of, his, of that is that I cannot discuss everything about a phone like another reviewer does, and I do get criticism on, on that. It's like, hey, but you didn't discuss this or you didn't discuss that. But usually I try to keep in mind that if I forget to discuss it during those five minutes, it's not that important. It might be for someone else, of course, and I'll reply to your questions uh, in the comments on YouTube, for example. I'll, I'll try to see like, oh, yeah, I didn't discuss it. I'll go check that out for you. But if, I, if it doesn't pop up in my mind, like, oh, I have to say this, it's not that important about that phone. That's kind of my, my line that I try to follow in, in, in those options and choices that I make. Um, so that's why I do that. It bores me to make a long review, that's what. And two, if I do not instantly think I have to say this about that phone, it's not that important about that phone. I don't think you go to a store on Saturday afternoon on your day off and say like, tell me every single specification about this phone you go and say look i call a lot so i want a good battery i have a twitter account and i have a lot of contacts so don't give me this shitty phone where i have to you know can't see my contacts properly which phone do i buy that's how you go to a store you don't go like well but this has this ram and, and, and i don't know is that a capacitive touchscreen or a resistant one you don't do that in the store so i started not doing it in the reviews no basically you if you do that in the store what i've personally noticed is that you scare the store clerks uh, yes. shit, shitless because they don't absolutely have no idea what they're talking exactly. about exactly i i often uh like I often go to stores, like even yesterday, I was at a, at a mobile phone store and then I hear these clerks talking to someone, like saying like, yes, this phone is this and you can do that. And I so often have to like bite my fist. To, no, that's not true. No, you know, that's a lot more important. And what are you saying? That's not true. And, and, and or I hear people asking questions like, is this phone any good for surfing? And the clerk would be like, well, it does have Android 2.0 install, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yes or no? Just say yes or no. And I really have to stop myself from, excuse me, <laughs> I tested that phone. It's crap. Don't buy it. Just just get that one over there. It's a lot better. I know he's not going to sell that one to you because it's fi 50 euro cheaper, but that one's a lot better for your money. Mm -hmm. So I try not to do that. But um, how many hard. times How many times did you get expelled from a store before you <laughs> learned? <laughs> I did annoy a lot of... Uh, uh, clerks over time when I would go purchase a phone for or with a friend and the, the people at the store would start talking about the phone. I was like, well, but isn't that, you know, with this brand, that's not really developed. You say it has it, but it doesn't function that, that, that well on this phone, does it? 
And then these people would stare at me like, well. I, I know exactly what you mean. I have, a hard, I have a hard time not, not being condescending, like tapping him on the shoulder and going like, dude, you're seriously out of your league. Give up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I understand on one side because these people are in a store where probably five new models come in every single day, try knowing everything about. I mean, often they're just reading it from the box. Oh, yes, man, this phone has uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, I understand you can't know everything but if you work in a store if i can know it you can too you know yeah yeah it's like but it's their job it's different but it's it's uh it's refreshing to have a store clerk that's not captain obvious yes exactly that, <laughs> we're yeah. gonna be uh right back talking more about mobile phones about the different brands and what secrets impressions are on them right after this break <laughs> And we're back with Sigrid Dufremont, uh, Belgian blogger, video blogger, mobile phone reviewer. And we're talking about mobile phones, by the way. Um, Sigrid, the three major lines, before we get into it, I do want to say uh, to anybody who has been following the KWTV um, blog and all the Mac fanboys in my cross-platform sliding community who are angry at me for buying an Android, it's this girl's fault. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh great yeah, there's yep. the hate mail <laughs> yep send your hate mail too uh, <laughs> um, you review all kinds of phones um, you're not uh, you're also you, we, we could call you the cross platform sliding female Slide. mobile phone nightwise actually not right yeah yeah I guess yeah I'm sorry for a second there I thought you were going to say something completely different uh, I was like what is he going to say but yeah I, uh, I'm i pretty cross platform although I, I have to admit I have my preferences um, I have an iPhone 2G still the very first iPhone that I imported from the US uh, when you all in Belgium were still uh, were still trying to make oh fire. yeah what's that iPhone and you saw the picture in the in the newspaper but I already already had it very proud of it uh, I actually still blame myself for not going out and buying it on the first day that it came out in the U.S. because I was there. <laughs> but uh, but with the contracts and AT&T and everything, it, it took six months to jailbreak it and unlock it. So after all, I'm happy uh, I imported it. Um, so that's how it started uh, in the smartphone world. Before that, I tried more of the classical cell phones. I didn't blog about it. It was more like a personal hobby. Um, but then... We had the horrible, horrible, horrible launch of the iPhone 3G in Belgium by Mobistar, yep. which I thought was just horrif horrific. And it's, it was uh, the analogy that you could use is opening up a McDonald's in the desert in in uh, yeah. I don't know Kenya or something. Yeah, they were just horrible at it, and um, that kind of turned me away from the 3G. Um, just out of principle. So I kept the 2G for, for, for another year, I think. I think the iPhone 2G is the phone I had the longest in my life. I must have had it for about two years. That's for, for me, that's, that's, an eternity. that's like a marriage. <laughs> that's, that's just incredible. But then the 3GS came out and I was like, wow, but you know, the 3GS compared to the 3G is not that impressive. And Mobistar, I actually pre-ordered it, and the day before the launch, the Mobistar store called me and said, sorry, we know you were on the list, you were like number five, so we know we said you could pick it up tomorrow or the day after, but our head, core, our head office in Brussels told us we cannot allow this no longer. So you'll just have to come to the store and be in the line or do whatever you need to do, but we cannot... Get in line with the peasants, you Yes, make. yes, exactly. So we cannot process your pre-order. Uh, it's no longer valid. Now, that pissed me off so bad that on the same day, I think, I went to buy an, uh, to buy an Android phone. Um, the HTC Magic came out 
two days before that and I had heard about it, wasn't too interested in it I was because I saw the, the G1, the first Google phone. I was like, wow, that, that thing is ugly. I mean, compared to the iPhone, it's like, wow, how did they come up with this thing? It's, it's awful. But sorry for all those Android fanboys <laughs> because they loved it. You um, shall not blaspheme. <laughs> yeah, yes, blasphemy. But then this HTC Magic came out, this little cute white phone. And I was like, well, Mobistar sucks. Apple chose Mobistar uh, even after the last year's horrific launch. So it's their fault that I'm pissed off. So I'm going to go to... Uh, to Android. I'm going to go get myself that HTC Magic. And I did. And I loved it. I was like, wow, it has multitasking. You know, I can, I can do things in the background. I can, I can play like um, Shoutcast uh, applications in the background while I'll email and not just listen to music that is in the iPod function, iPod application of Apple. So I was like, wow, this is great. And I loved it. And I kept it for about Six months until the HTC Hero came out, which I loved even more. And that's when I really started loving Android and stopped missing my iPhone. I was still pissed off. I can be very stubborn. I was so pissed off about the pre-ordering thing. It was like, even if I miss my iPhone, I'm not going to buy one. <laughs> Steve Jobs could have brought one to your front door. You would have slammed the door in his face. Well, I would have invited him in for coffee and asked, why on earth did you pick Mobistar <laughs> uh, uh, to launch your phone here? Reference, but, Mobistar in Belgium could be compared to Verizon in, uh, in the U.S.? Uh, I guess, I guess, uh, or AT&T, I guess. Take your really, well, in, in whatever country you are, take your the worst phone provider that you have, yes, multiply that by two, and then squeeze them into very tiny shops where you can only place three people at the same time and behind the counter put somebody who knows more about dairy cows than about mobile phones and then you have your Mobistar shop. Well, I have to add that now, uh, since about a week, I'm a Mobistar customer because my... <laughs> my send, send your hate mail my Mobistar, way. Mobistar, don't sue me. I'm a customer, okay? Hate me. Screwed hate up me. on the launch of the iPhone and I still became a customer, so... Okay. Um, but... Yeah, so that's how I got into Android, and I must say I loved it. But after having the HTC Hero for about a month, I started to bump into limitations. I can't even remember what those were, but that's how I started rooting, and that's how I started blogging, really, um, because I spent days looking on all these forums how do I root, the, root this phone? How do I install a custom ROM? And that was just so much work before I got that working on my phone without completely destroying it. So that's one of my very first mobile blog posts, like how to root your HTC Hero, get rid of all those limitations that HTC put on there, and uh, install amazing custom ROMs. And uh, that's how uh, my blog really took off, because people came like, Wow, we've been looking everywhere, but you seem to have gathered all that information and posted a uh, walkthrough how to install this on our phone. And I did the same for the HTC Magic that I still had at home and posted that. That was one of the first videos that I posted, a video of the HTC Magic running Android. I don't know what it was. I think 2.0. Very buggy, but it worked. And uh, uh, that's how that kind of started. And that's what I love. I, I think I love the hacking community behind Android even more than the actual operating system. The pirates, uh, the, 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 the freedom makers. Yeah, the, the Paul O'Briens of Modico and the XDA developer forum. I love it. I love these people like chasing uh, leaks of the ROMs of other phones and porting those to cell phones that are entirely not capable of running this and still making it work. I, I love those guys. I actually donated um, money, small money, <laughs> several times just out of pure gratitude. Like, wow, you made my phone even cooler. My HTC Hero can do something that will take HTC another month to come up with or to, to and in the end it was more than a year, I think, before they came with the uh, update on the HTC Hero while I was just using Android 2.1 and 2.0 and HTC was trying to make it work, but these hackers did. 
And that's what I love about Android, that it constantly gets improved because of people demanding a lot. And if the if Google is not going to give it to him or HTC is not going to give it to him, they'll make it themselves. Fine, we'll do it ourselves. Yeah, I love that. I love well, that about Android. With well, those with those awesome possibilities of, of the Android, I, I, I mostly compare my Android phone to a box of Legos. Basically, you can do anything with it. Just open yes. it up and, and and make your own stuff. Um, but what 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 does make what makes the iOS uh, walled garden? Or I've heard a better quote lately: the padded cell, the padded prison, the velvet black velvet pearl yeah. laced uh, padded prison cell. What does what do you think makes that so popular? It's very easy to use. And it looks good. And it just <laughs> works. But it, that's the price of the free. It you pay. works as long as you don't demand things that it doesn't do. If you don't want so, to break out of the cell, it's very comfortable. Yeah, as long as you want to stay in the cell, in the closed OS, in the Apple world, which is still a beautiful world. I mean, I'm a Mac fan all the way. But if you, for instance, last night for a project, I asked another girl <laughs> who is wildly uh, in love with her HTC Desire HD, and I asked, can you write a little piece about it for a new project? Oh, there goes my screen again. And tell me just a bit about your experience in your typical way. And apparently she's single, and she likes putting handsome guys on the back of her phone, but on an Apple phone, like on an iPhone, you cannot say like, hey, this guy's head is in the middle of my screen. I'm going to move these icons of these applications so I can see his head. You can't. But on an Android phone, you're just like, oh, I'm going to put that icon on that screen and that. Oh, and look, it's like almost a heart shape of applications around his head. And it sounds so stupid and so superficial, but just the fact that you cannot do that on an iPhone, just basically say, I want to see my background. I want to see this wallpaper. You can't. Okay, since we're talking about wallpapers anyway, this is a side-by-side -side screencast. So if you lean that way, and I lean that way, and people can now take a screenshot and and have a beautiful <laughs> girl or guy on their phone and put the icons right here. So, I'll do that. Okay, okay. I was hitting you before. I, yes, I'm yes. very nice right now. <laughs> normally, she should be on this side, so we could have our own very little cat fight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, down another rabbit hole. Um, we talked about uh, Android and the iOS. Um there are, of course, two other parties um, there, and, and I always lean towards them as being the, the slightly geriatric um, family of, of the mobile, the, the, the geriatrics of the mobile phone family, Windows Mobile. Uh, we won't talk about 7 just yet because we haven't had any hands-on experience. At least I've not. I don't know if you have. And, uh, and Little. And the Crackberry. Um, what about those two platforms? Do you think that they're still really in the, in the running or are they chasing different markets? I think I've been writing last night um, but I didn't really get to the point where I wanted to get about the Blackberry Torch and I was thinking um, I was almost comparing it to um, a Mac computer because you know a lot of now Mac's all popular but if you said to your family three years ago and they didn't have Macs and you said, I've got this MacBook, they would say, what? But it has a slow processor and, you know, and what about games and, and this and that? And, and the temperature of the CPU isn't as, yes. as hot as the surface and of the sun, I mean. That, that's a bit how people approach the BlackBerry Torch. It's like, ah, but they're only catching up and it only has, what, 512 megabytes of RAM? I mean, that's bad. And, and they approach it like that. But when you honestly look at it, I don't even know what the processor is really because all I pay attention to on a BlackBerry phone is how does it look? I know what the operating system is like. Is a keyboard any good? And uh, did they screw up massively and suddenly it stopped working or not? Apart from that, Blackberry, I know exactly what my BlackBerry is going to do. Like the BlackBerry Storm first version? Yeah, that was bad. Massive screw up. Yeah. Yeah, massive screw up. Okay, but everyone can screw up. But for instance, apart from that, usually the BlackBerry hardware, it's not surprising. It's not innovating. But it works. 
but it works. And I love my BlackBerry and I have the torch. I've been, I have the torch for about two weeks now and I'm completely in love. And it's not like with an Android phone, like the HTC Desire HD, like, wow, it has a big screen and look at my processor. Look it's at like, a, like a, like a flat screen with a, with a, with a SIM card. Yes. Yes. So with an Android phone, you're like, really proud about about all the specifications with a blackberry you're not going to talk about the specifications you just have the new blackberry yep. um you have to go to crackberry.com to read about people discussing the specifications it's just a blackberry i think people shouldn't compare it you don't compare the hardware of a macbook with that of a laptop if you do you do not understand the difference between the two types of computers sure. and i think it's a bit the same or at least i'm starting to think that way between a BlackBerry and, for instance, an iPhone, no more an Android phone and a Windows 7 phone, which are both very focused on the specifications because it actually tells you something about the performance on these devices. If you buy an Android phone and it has a 500 gigahertz, no, megahertz um, processor with Android 2.2 installed, I'm going to be like, I'm not buying that. That's going to be slow. The specifications tell me something about the expected performance. The BlackBerry, I just assume they put in the hardware they needed for the operating system that they installed, and that's it. And sometimes they screw up, like they try something new, like this on the Storm. But I think they learned a lot from it. And now with the Torch, I love BlackBerry 6. And sure, it's it's just catching up to the rest of the party yeah, but, but it's, it's catching up. Really it's good catch, catch up. It's a good catch up. They learn yeah. from 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 the mistakes from the others. Windows Mobile six point five. Is I didn't the, even try it. The OS of the dinosaur. Yeah, um, I have to admit that the first uh, before the iPhone, I had a couple of Windows Mobile phones, um, and at that point, I often liked them and hated them at the same time because it was the only available operating system that would do what I needed it to do, except from BlackBerry, which I already loved back then. So I had a lot of Windows mobile phones, but then as soon as there was an alternative in the iPhone, oh man, that BlackBerry, that, that phone is out of the, out of the ballpark. I think, I think it's, it's much because the, the, the mobile Windows mobile OS until 7.0 still was the uh, compact iPack I yeah. pack, not I pack. I pack is very good reference. Yeah, yeah it's, it's I pack. It was an I pack plus, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, one one final question because uh, we're we're gonna slightly round up here. It's it's been delightful to talk to you, but it's, I do want to pick your brain about that. Um, I meet Sigrid five years into the future. She pulls out her cell phone. What is it, and what does it do? What in general are the abilities of the cell phone that it does that does not um, that it doesn't do right now. How do you see That's your personal very interesting question cell phone in five years? The cell phones finally caught up to my imagination of 10 years ago. So I'm having a hard time imagining what will follow next. Um, kind of a, at the border of my imagination now. <laughs> it's like, okay, we finally got what I thought we would have sooner. But now, I think touch obviously is is, is going to stay um, the combination of touch and, and keyboard like BlackBerry does right now with the Torch is for me very interesting because everyone was like, wow, touchscreen, we're going to do everything on the touchscreen. And now you see more and more devices and brands coming so back do, do with both. the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like the Desire Z, it has a keyboard and the touchscreen, the Palm Pre, um, really interested in, 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 in the web OS of Palm. Um, what I'm waiting is for is even more interaction with your device, between your device and your environment. Oh, there's my mother calling. Okay, <laughs> gonna press that up. Oh, you but, have a you have a cell phone. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How rad. <laughs> no, I sold all of them, and I'm gonna live in a hut on the, <laughs> in the forest of Limburg, where you live. Oh, oh Never thank you. Touch a cell phone again. Okay. That's my future in five years. <laughs> no, but I, I expect, I hope for a lot more interaction between your cell phone and your environment. Like in theory, you can pay with your cell phone, but no one does. Uh, in theory, theory, you can get information or check in with your cell phone. But in reality, yeah, it doesn't much of a hassle. work that much. So I think it's going to be even more of an, get more and more of an extension of yourself. 
I'm not saying we're going to build in chips. I don't think that'll be that'll happen. But it will be in your, the next five years. And if it does, I'm not going to do it. It, it will be your personal digital communicator assistant. assistant. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's like right now, and this is one small thing that I've been looking for, and it's so funny. I've been looking for it on because I recently just started up as a freelancer, so I have a ton of things to think about. And what I was looking for on iOS on my iPad is an application that tells me. This is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. And if you are planning on doing something else, you only have 45 minutes to do it. Didn't find it. Just had the classic to-do list and everything. So I start up my BlackBerry Torch and I sync the calendar with my uh, Google Calendar. And I go into the calendar and suddenly it says, you have free time from midnight to 7 in the morning. I was like, this phone does exactly what I wanted it to do. It's someone to tell me what my schedule looks like, but not just what it looks like, but how much time do I have left to do stuff. So someone asked me, do you have time for lunch? Oh, yes, my BlackBerry says I have time for lunch between one and two. It specifically says here you have free time. I, I love that. I would, and, I would personally uh, also want something like that, but that would entice that we would become, uh, would be coming to the point where we call our cell phones mom. <laughs> Yes, I guess. But if if I can choose what direction cell phones go to, it would be more options right now. It's a lot of times it's still a closed uh, ecosystem. More connectors. Um, now, you know, everyone's trying to get on a mobile boom and trying to develop applications for the most crazy things. And I think we need to, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be like the, the dot-com boom, you know? Everyone's suddenly like, wow, we have to do something with the internet. And now it's, oh, we have to do something with something, mobile. Something with phones. Yeah, they, just they something. Know. Yeah, yeah. It's like with Facebook. Everyone wants to be on Facebook. All of a sudden, we have to be on Facebook. Um, so it's the same with we have to have a mobile application or we have to have this and this and this. But if you do want to, you want to do it well, you're going to have to develop for the iPhone, for an Android phone, for several Android phones, for the BlackBerry, for even the um, uh, Samsung okay. yeah. with Bada, the operating system. It's like getting crazy. And I think in five years, we will have to have had a refocus. A Maybe it's, it's back to web applications, yeah. a perhaps. Uni a universal API that works on everything. Yeah, I would like my phones, my devices to interact with my environment and not having to buy everything from the same brand <laughs> in my environment. And I want to walk to the store and say, um, okay, this is my phone. I click on something or I scan it or whatever. I show something on my screen and I pay. The creepy part is, of course, that my phone becomes a tracker of everything what I do, uh, everything that I do and buy and, and, and see. Uh, but I love to, uh, yeah, I'm going to love seeing that being... That personal integration. Yes, how that's like with applications like Layer and... Um, how is the application just a, a team member from a project just blogged about ways the application where you um, have this kind of open source community that reports how the roads are if there's traffic jams going on. Um, I love that kind of um, social interaction between people and their cell phones. Basically, your, your cell phone becoming your personal adapter to your digital life. Yeah, it's like a key. I, pl yeah. I plug in here and I plug in there and I let you know this and you can know this, but you can't. Um, I love that development, but I think it can be dangerous too. So we'll have to kind of find a way to all make it work and all communicate with each other. Right now, we're all just being BlackBerry is best. No, the iPhone's better. And you can do this on the iPhone and you cannot on the BlackBerry. And I wish BlackBerry and iPhone would communicate. I think so. we're, we're, the OS wars are, are going on all over again and, and they will find the end as well. Uh, Sigrid, it's been yes. very, very great talking to you. I am so excited that uh, I, I had you on, on the podcast. By the way, and I'm excited to be here on your birthday. Yeah. Again, oh, wish you a happy God. birthday. <laughs> On the comments, on the you, comments. You mean woman. I shall track down your <laughs> birthday on Facebook and I shall post many, many blogs that you are turning, that you're going towards your 30th birthday pretty soon. No, See? that's still years ahead. That's yeah, you're, mean. You're, See, uh, that's what I mean about bloggers not checking their facts. <laughs>
Uh, I can still do that. Uh, <laughs> Secret, it's been so great having you. Uh, where can people find you if they are interested in following uh, one of the most talented Belgian uh, female video bloggers? Uh, well, the easiest way to uh, say it here, because of course there's Secret Schrift but that's horrible for Americans. Uh, you can find me on YouTube and you can uh, find more information there. And that would be Radio Girl 83. So just uh, one word, Radio Girl 83. 83. Okay. Yeah. okay. You are, of course, also a member of the social media etiquette, where you are on Twitter. Yes. People can follow yes. your, your... That's your harder. Tweets. You should probably put that in a little... <laughs> it's like... Ra radio Girl. <laughs> Basically, that's not for being creative. That's just because Radio Girl wasn't available. Yeah, so, I had, I had the three same, R's every time. I had the uh, same problem uh, looking for a, the official nickname for Niana. Because the official one was taken, and we had to work our way around that. But yes, exactly. It's been so great having you on the show. I hope Thank that you. we uh, get to meet soon. Well, oh, it, we will. It, it doesn't. It, it doesn't take a three-hour road trip. That's a good thing. No, but that's the, true. Yeah, that's true. If you take a three-hour road trip, you'll be in Germany, and if I take a three-hour yeah. road trip, I'll be in England. So. Or in the sea, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> okay. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, secret rights dot. Com? Dot com. Dot yeah. com for your blog. Your blog is partially in English and partially in Dutch. Yep, both of them. Okay, and most of your podcasts, <clears throat> sorry, video casts are in uh, English. English, oh, yes. When's Secret uh, going to come to the podcasting world? When are we going to be able to download you from the iTunes store and put us put you on the podcast player? Cause That's funny. I tried, but uh, my podcast got uh, rejected. I have to see what's wrong with the feed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if yeah. you need any out there, just let me know. Okay, I will. It's been great having you, and we'll uh, talk later. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, the beautiful and fantastically talented and super smart and very phone um, phone uh, fanatic uh, esque, and um, also disturbed by cell phone signals, but uh, I, I left that in because that was so typical. Uh, Sigrid Dufremont, thank you for having you. Okay, bye. So, I hope you enjoyed KWTV uh, 0018 with Sigrid Dufremont. As usual, all the links will be available in the show notes and you'll be able to uh, go to her website and check out all the cool reviews that she's doing. Until next time, we'll be out of here for KWTV 0019 and I'm going to have a cup of coffee. You know what to do, www.nightwise.com for all of the cool website information and of course Twitter, www.twitter.com slash nightwise. You know what to do, you know the drill. See you guys in the next episode of KWTV.